Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, Curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today we're going to be talking about the various galley spaces on board the battleship, some of which are on the tour route, some of which are being restored to be added to the tour route, and some of which can be rented for events. The different galleys service crew members based on their rank. The officers are the highest ranking members of the crew, and they have their own galley spaces and their own place where they eat. Captains and admirals also have their own stuff. Enlisted men are broken into a couple different categories based on their rank, with most of the enlisted men eating from the galley right here, which is by far the largest of the galleys. If you come on board for an overnight program, we serve you food from the ship's original galley here, and you eat in the ship's crew's mess where the enlisted sailors would have eaten. There are also separate mess spaces for first-class petty officers and chief petty officers, which are higher enlisted ranks. Here in the galley, there are two serving lines. As built, the ship could have as many as 3,000 crew on board. By the 1980s, there were about 1,500 enlisted men eating from these service lines. One of these service lines would have been serving the meal of the day. Uh, the other service line would have been serving fast food. The cooks on this ship could prepare four meals a day and then some. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, and mid rounds or midnight rations. Remember, the sailors are working around the clock in shifts, so meals are being prepared in shifts, and food is being left out for people in between shifts and in between meals. So this is one of the two enlisted uh, mess spaces for second-class sailors and below. This is how it would have looked in the 1980s with the McDonald's-style benches. Uh, in Vietnam, Korea, and World War II, all of the tables and chairs in here would have been completely removable, uh, so that this could be used as a wide-open recreation space, as um, a triage space in battle, uh, for a number of different reasons, as a place where you could watch movies, or a meeting space, or uh, any other sort of communal events. So uh, the switch to the fixed tables in the 1980s sort of limits that. Some people even slept in here during World War II when the crew was expanded. In the 1980s, drink machines, ice cream machines, salad bars like this one next to me were all added into this space as well. So you'd get your food from the service line and you could get other fixings um, after you would move through the service line back to here. There are also uh, partition screens that can be put up to divide the space into thirds, uh, which we do not have up right now, but in order to break it up, you could uh, some of the spaces could be used as classroom spaces when there's not a meal in session, uh, a chapel, things like that. So this is first class mess. The first class petty officers had their own coffee station and other stuff and where they could eat separately from the junior enlisted guys. Chief petty officers had their own galley where their own food could be prepared. Enlisted sailors are fed for free by the Navy. That includes Chief Petty Officers First Class and the lower enlisted men who serve from the gals. The officers, however, have to pay for their own food. And the chiefs have their own mess area where they get to eat, uh, and it's considerably fancier than the other enlisted guys. Chiefs are career Navy men who have been in usually about 20 years by the time they make this rank, and they are technical experts in their individual fields. Not only do they uh, have their food prepared and eat in separate areas, they even berth in a separate part of the ship. Unlike the enlisted men, the ship's officers had a series of galleys and preparation spaces for their food. This is the officer's galley uh, as built. By the 1980s, it isn't clear quite how in use it was. On this ship, we have tags on a lot of the equipment that says active or inactive, which seems to imply that when the ship was reactivated for some $300 million 
in the 1980s that they chose not to reactivate everything in this space, uh, the, the number of officers on board was significantly less than when the ship was designed. And like I said, there's another space directly above us we'll see in a minute. So it, it's kind of unclear how much this space was used. Uh, you might notice that this is one of the least restored of our galleys on board. Uh, it was a storage area for most of the museum era of the ship, and we have recently cleaned it out. Um, this project was spearheaded by our collections manager, Elena Nolan, and uh, now we're starting to restore it so that we can open it as uh, an exhibit space on the Blue Line tour app. The Iowa class battleships had a dumbwaiter to move the officer's food from the galley down here where it's stored and cooked up to a serving station by the wardroom where it is plated and put out for the officers and up to the flag officer spaces on the O2 level and the captain's import cabin on the O1 level. So this dumbwaiter could go up a series of spaces. Uh, New Jersey's was damaged by the end of her career and it no longer functions. When Missouri was reactivated in 1986, we believe that uh, her officer's galley was not reactivated at all, and they did everything from the serving station up above. Uh, it's unclear whether her dumbwaiter was ever reactivated in the 80s or if it's non-functional like ours is now. Uh, if you're associated with any of the other Iowa class battleships, leave a note in the comment. Let us know what you know about these spaces and their use in the 80s. So this is the scullery, basically a dishwashing space on the ship. There are a couple associated with the various galleys on board. There's uh, several for the enlisted men down below, and then this is the one for the officer's stuff. So this is the officer's pantry. It could be fed by dumbwaiter from the officer's galley directly beneath us, or there's a, a ladder just outside of the officer's galley that leads basically to here for when the dumbwaiter isn't working or isn't activated. This is where final preparation of the food is done, where it's put on plates. Now we've got passing windows here so it can be passed out to other stewards who can sort of put it on the food trays, put it on, on the table in front of the officers. Uh, this space is also where the officer's dishes are stored in cabinets like this one and other racks around the space. Now we're in the officer's wardroom on the other side from the passing windows in the officer's pantry. This is where the officers would be served their food and eat. Uh, some meals, the food would just be arranged in serving stations like this one. We've got a salad bar and a, a hot service area. Other meals would be more formal and the stewards would bring out the plates of food to the officers. Much like the other mess spaces on the ship, seating in the wardroom is hierarchical. The highest ranking officer, the ship's executive officer who presides over wardroom meals, sitting at the head table, and lower ranking officers sitting at tables further down towards the port side of the room. This space is accessed on our tour route, and it can also be reserved for events, ceremonies, and other things like that. This space is the captain's pantry. It's not particularly big. There would have only been probably one steward in here doing final preparation of the captain's food. In 1989, 1990, when the ship had an admiral on board again, this was also used for his pantry. Prior to that, there would have been a separate pantry a level above us, but that is no longer here. The captain didn't eat in the wardroom with the other officers unless he was specifically invited. He would often eat up here in his import cabin. This is also where he would entertain uh, guests, foreign dignitaries, and sometimes he would invite his officers up here to eat with them. Thanks for watching today. If you have any comments, Drop them down below. 
Uh, if you would like to support the museum or the um, YouTube channel, there's a link in the description below. Remember to like, share, and subscribe so you'll be notified when we put out more content like this, and I'll see you next time.